everyone, Mango7 Roll here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7. Uh, today we're going to talk about Lilius, where to use her, uh, how to build her, what equipment, what skill ups, if you should pull all those shenanigans. So hopefully this helps you out. I just want to say uh, she just came out, so a lot of this might not be 100% right yet. We're still sort of working on it and it will evolve in the next little bit. But this is my general theory so far for her. Um, so far, yes, I think you should pull for her. I think she's a really unique unit. I think she's great for PvE. I think she's great for PvP. I think she's great for defense. I think she's great for offense. I think she's an okay camper. Overall, I really like everything she has. And she's another one of those units that may excel in the future because she does have scaling with other people. She does have a dual attack uh, on her skill one. So as more skill ones come out that are somewhat useful, she will get more useful uh, in the future. So I really think she's another Isaria type unit where um, she kind of does everything and she's really good and she's definitely worth the summons. So uh, let's talk about her skills first. She has a guaranteed dual attack on her skill one. She's got a uh, provoke for two turns, just like Clurry. It also does not hit. So this means uh, it's um, unmissable or whatever. You can use it against enemies, uh, water units, and it doesn't have the glance chance base. Uh, and her skill, oh, it also has a huge barrier, by the way. Uh, and her skill three does everything. Dispels all debuffs, increases combat readiness by 25% of the enemy, increases combat readiness by 50% for uh, Lilius herself, and also um, damage dealt is according to the hero with the highest attack. So obviously people are trying out Gunther memes and stuff like that. I don't know if that's the way to go yet, but I know with just like 4,000 attack on somebody it is good enough of a boost for her. So as for her Molagora, um, I think you definitely need this one at minus one cooldown. Uh, I think this one I'm not sure about yet. Uh, I will be maxing this just because getting that 100% effect chance is a good thing. But I could maybe see somebody not wanting to skill this up just so you get more dual attacks. But I don't think that's going to be a thing. Um... So I'm definitely going to max out her skill 2, and I'm probably going to max out her skill 3. I really like this unit, and I think she's worth it in the long run. Um, and that extra 10% damage is really going to help out. As for her skill 1, I'm not sold on it yet. I'm personally going to put uh, probably up to plus 2. I think it's really safe to put uh, units you use everywhere up to plus 1 or plus 2 on their skill 1s, just for a little bit of damage, because it only takes 1 to 3 Molagoras uh, for that as well. She's also got an attack percent additional effect which kinda is pretty great for her imprint unfortunately i don't think it meshes too well with ss bologna uh, granted you can put lilius in the tank spot and have uh, bologna in the back get the attack buff and the other person get the attack buff so specific situations like that is going to be really good for guild war and i think as we uh, progress more into three person teams two person imprints are actually going to be really really good going forward um, okay, so that's that are important for Lilius. Honestly, pretty much everything, you know? Uh, she, she has pretty much every sort of need for every sort of stat. She needs HP percent, she needs defense percent to tank a little bit, she needs speed to dispel all your team, she needs crit chance, she needs crit damage, she needs effectiveness. Uh, there's a lot of different routes you can go. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to be building her with max crit rate or near max crit rate, a ton of crit damage, but I also think there's the opportunity to be just a super disruptive, super tanky, super fast Lilius and not really worry about the damage too much. Um, both of those options are probably going to be working out too well. Uh, she will also need effectiveness because we do have a provoke on her skill 2 and we do have the combat readiness decrease on her skill 3, so both of those do require effectiveness to land, so keep that in mind. Uh, she absolutely needs the effectiveness. And the good part about her effectiveness here is, if I don't hit the wrong button here, if we go to um, Awaken, her final Awaken is a 12% uh, effectiveness, I believe. Um, yeah, 12% effectiveness, she gets some health here, she gets speed, which is just a that puts her up to 110 speed. Uh, another 6% effectiveness there as well. So, uh, for Boots, I think you have two options. Uh, one thing going forward, I don't know if attack is going to be too useful. Uh, it's something I haven't tested, so I'm going to go and stray away from attack percent gear just because I don't think it'll scale well enough. Um, 
But for two boots, I think you have two options. One of them is speed boots. Uh, as always, speed is pretty much king for almost everything at this point. And uh, another option you have is HP percent instead. Uh, I think both are viable uh, because I think a lot of teams might want to let the enemy go first so you can dispel and then have your turn. Um, and for HP percent, that will work for that. So really good examples of HP percent boots I could use on her are something like this with um, two defensive stats, effectiveness, uh, a little bit of damage and a little bit of speed. Um, but I stuck with the speed boots instead to get me some a uh, little bit of everything. I crafted these last night, by the way. They are insane. Um, as for the ring, I think as of now, there are basically three options. I think one is better than the others. Uh, first one I would go for is HP percent because I think HP percent scales really well. Um, with her skill to, or not her skill to, her uh, um, Bastion of Perlusia there, I think that helps. She also gets a little bit of damage here, but really that doesn't matter too much. Not to mention it makes her much tankier. Um, two other options, I think if you really, really, really want to land your skills, I think maybe effectiveness, but probably not. And uh, effect resistance is always an okay option, especially on units like these that are going to be tanky enough anyway, and probably not going to be the first target for the enemy to hit. So having like effect resistance rings with uh, decent substats is always a good option too. But again, I would recommend HP percent. And as for her neck, I think you have three options for your neck as well. One of them is HP percent, and uh, I like this option if you can support it with a speed, crit damage, crit chance subs. The other is a crit rate ring, or crit rate neck, and this is just to make sure you have enough crit rate, and that way you can skimp on every other piece of gear. And the third option, if you have a good enough gear set, is going to be crit damage. I think either three of these work, and uh, whatever one you take, you're trying to get the others in the substats. So for example, um, with an HP percent neck here, I'm trying to get crit damage, crit chance, speed. Um, or if I'm not going the crit rate route, I'm just trying to go for defense percent for effect for effectiveness. Um, if I'm going for a crit chance neck, I'm probably going to want to get crit damage on the subs um, or speed on the subs. If I'm going for a crit damage neck, I'm probably going to want to get crit chance or maybe some speed on the subs as well. Um, something like this would be pretty close to perfect, right? We've got the crit damage, we've got crit chance, uh, speed, effect, resist. Something like that would be perfect. And this isn't as straightforward as usual, right? Because we have so many different choices for her. So uh, keep that in mind. It's really important to listen as we talk to understand why you're doing these decisions. Um, as for the chest, helm, and weapon, uh, these are just going to be your filler. Uh, you're obviously going to want a little bit of every stat. Speed is important. Uh, effectiveness is important. Crit rate, crit damage are important if you're going for that too. Uh, HP percent, everything on your left side, it's kind of filler. Like if, you don't, or if you're if you using a crit damage neck, you're probably going to want to get crit rate on your left side. Um, if you're using a crit rate neck, you're probably going to want to get some crit damage over here, you know. There's a bunch of different options like that. And as for sets, I definitely like a speed set, even if you're going HP percent boots, even if you're not going 220 speed, if, even if you're going like 170, 180, she does get 26 or 27 speed, I think 27 speed with a speed set, which is just insanely valuable. So absolutely worth it to get a speed set for that. And as for her alternative, I really like immunity. But if you can't get immunity, you have your choice of crit rate, uh, hit rate, any of the other two set options. The reason why I like immunity is just because this uh, dispels everything. So you can use her to tank a Dizzy, you can use her to tank um, basically anybody, right? And then have, uh, with her immunity, guarantee that she gets the dispel going off um, is another really, really good option. So that's pretty much it for her. And... I like her a lot, so I, I personally so far like the high crit rate, and I have Luna on my team right now, so this is about an 80% crit rate with her, uh, 209 crit damage, lots of HP, lots of speed, and if I wasn't using Bastion of Perlusia right now to keep my Luna alive, I would probably drop some HP for some crit damage. As for artifacts, you have a ton of different options. You can always go Elbrus, but keep in mind, it's not going to dual attack, but still getting that attack in there sometimes is worth it. Probably not, but I thought I would mention it. You can always go, um, let's sort it by grade here. 
you can always go uh do i have it high leg shield is always an alternative aureus always an alternative portrait is always an alternative if you're going for the cleave style a uh, portrait adds a ton of damage um you really just have a wealth of artifacts to choose from and it really just depends on the specific scenario you're using for four and that's one of my favorite parts about her is you have a ton of different places you can her. um so one thing i want to look at is our guild war right now we're against big band which is a top five guild i believe uh and a lot of them obviously have lilius she just came out we're getting pretty much bodied my defense got bodied i used um violet her and luna just because i really really wanted to use the two together uh but i lost horribly um haven't done my attacks yet but i want to take a look at them see if they have any um what's her name again lilius is and see how they used her because i think that's really important right now to just kind of get an idea of how the top guilds are using her and i'm actually seeing less here than i expected i expected a ton of them on defense um but we haven't even seen one yet which is kind of surprising um i thought for sure they would be testing her out right now wow literal zero in that one maybe there's more here okay here we go here's the first one this one is lilia's violet and dn um not a bad combination so one of the problems i found with dn is she doesn't really keep up with the spells anymore so now the double dispel here would work great and having Lilius as the Dispel, you can probably run Rod of Amaryllis on your again. That's enough healing to keep everybody through. Violet's probably got about 5k attack is my guess. So they're going to do tons of damage together. Um, you can see this defense has only uh, full defense Schmitza once. So not sure how good that is going to be in the long run. Um, but that's a pretty good showing. Is there any other Lilius people? There's got to be more. Uh, here's another one. Here's another one. This is exactly what I expected. The Lilius, ML Ken, and Luna. Just insane, insane attack from one of these two units. Honestly, probably the ML Ken. I'm not sure. Um, maybe maybe the Luna. Luna's a little harder to get a ton of attack on with all the crit damage you need. But either way, that's going to do infinity damage there. Um, and if you don't survive, like you don't kill them right away, it's going to be really hard to survive because one skill three and then she boosts her CR by 50% into one skill one. Is just a nasty place to be if you're trying to survive that hit. Um, I was expecting to see more Lilius and Charles, uh, but instead we're seeing a bunch of Lilius and Violet. So Lilius, Violet, and Akali. So this is the type of defense I would like. Um, one of my favorite defenses I wanted to build was very similar to this, actually, but I just don't have Akali ready yet. But having this Akali here means you're threatening like 250, 260 speed. Um, and then after that, you can build your DPS a little slower. It's just a really cool team here. Um, we haven't attacked this tower yet, so there's no defenses um, for that. But it'll be cool to see. Uh, any other Liliuses? I'm really happy we fought Big Band today, by the way. Uh, really cool to see them incorporated in their defenses. Um, here we go. Lilius Charles Bologna. That's literally exactly what I expected. Uh, one defense win versus Schmitza. Schmitza not doing so great. Sorry to call you out. Uh, Muskie took them both out. Not bad. I definitely expected to see a crap load of Lilius and, um, Lilius and, uh, Charles. This one is Lilius, Dizzy, and A. Vildred. And that person has gone three and one with that team against us and actually taken some of our really strong people out. Um, our new recruit getting the one win versus them. So this is a really good team too. So obviously Lilius and Abyssal Crown Dizzy are insane together. And uh, the huge attack from your A Vildred is just going to help out. I think this is a really good team because it really um, emphasizes how much of a threat A Vildred is in there, right? You have A Vildred in there and you could just lose badly, especially with... Um, Lilius here giving a Vildred your shield, uh, it might not get the kill. So if any of these people tried to cleave a Vildred, which is, I'm guessing, what happened, um, I'm guessing their first attack did not kill the Vildred, and then they died. Um, that's 100% I'm guessing what happened to those three. Anybody else here? Hopefully we see some more. Come on, have, have some big ballers here. 
have some big baller defense it. Ooh, that's a nasty defense over there. Anything else? One more? Any two DNs on defense? Interesting. Okay, so that was it. Uh, we saw about five of them from Big Band. Very interesting. So, um, let me know who's using Enot. Get out of my guild. Oh, Lionheart. <laughs> Lionheart, go back to Harado. I actually am so mad at you right now. Uh, anyways, I really hope this helped you out. I know uh, this last little bit has just been a lot of guesswork and stuff, but that's kind of what we're here for. It's been 24 hours since she's been released, so we don't have enough testing to really say for sure since she's such a unique unit. But I can say she's worth it. I can say she's one of the most fun units in the game so far just because she's so dynamic. Is that the right word? She can change so much and she can be used in so many different ways. Um, I've personally also used her in um, all of the dungeons except for Banshee so far. I did a bunch of runs uh, yesterday with Azamanicus, with um, Guider Aether, Vivian, her, and Judge Keystay. Uh, I also tried with Tamarin. I tried a bunch of different things. She works really well here. I'm sure she works really well in Giants too if you're doing that. Honestly, I'm pretty sure if you pair her with Luna, she's going to work really well in Wyvern too. Um, so there's a ton of different options for her. Uh, anyways, let me know if this helped you out. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the description below. I'll try to help you out and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. I said that twice. Oh, in an awkward way.